Hello everyone. This is Lucia Fletcher and the, the Carr Sunday School class, Jackson United Methodist Church Sunday School lesson for today. Now I'm recording this early in the week and so I hope that as the week progresses that things will get better and people and people will get better and that we can take all of this time to, to realize we had so much to learn and to, and to try to comprehend. Anyway, I hope you see behind my head is I have a wreath and two letters, and of course the wreath stands for O, and of course it says joy. Now I keep that up year round. In Christmas, I put a Christmas wreath where the, the O is, but um, joy. That's what I'm trying to remember. Now, my friend Cheryl Hildebrand sent me a, a very short poem this morning that kind of fits that, and this is what it said. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And I believe that, I think it is true. Now then, our lesson is called Living as God's People. This is a new quarter for the, uh, our, our, Bible, our Sunday School lessons from the Adult Bible School uh, Studies, and it's called Community is the name of the book. And my author, the author this time, who I paraphrase and read from, is named Robert P. Gardner, and he's a retired minister in the United Methodist Church. So, as I always say, the author wrote the lesson and Lucia Fletcher interprets it, good or bad. The um, lesson is based on the Israelites coming to the end of their journey through the desert, their 40 years of journey through the desert after 400 years of being enslaved in Egypt. Before I gets directly into that though I want to read one, a psalm that my daughter Jenny had posted today for her church I'm going to just read a few of the verses but it's from Psalms 104 may the glory of the Lord endure forever may the Lord rejoice in his works he who looks at the earth and it trembles who touches the mountains and they smoke I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But many sinner, And may many sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Our lesson comes from the book of Deuteronomy and the book. Uh, passages that I'm going to read are from Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 10. And the purpose of it is to, to remember how God created us as God's people. You must, be, you must carefully perform all the commandments that I am commanding you right now so that you can live and multiply and enter and take possession of the land that the Lord swore to, our, to your ancestors. Remember the long road on which the Lord your God led you during those 40 years in the desert so he could humble you, testing you to find out what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you by making you hungry and then feeding you the manna that neither you nor your ancestors had ever experienced so he could teach you that people don't live by bread alone. No, they live based on whatever the Lord says. During these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out, your feet didn't swell up. Know then in your heart that the Lord your God has been disciplining you as a child disciplines his children. Keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. Because the Lord your God is bringing you to a wonderful land, 
a land with streams of water, springs, and wells that gush up in the valleys and on the hills, a land of wheat and barley, vines, fig trees, and a pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land where you will eat food without any salt shortage. You won't lack a thing here. A land where stone is hard as iron and where you will mine copper from the hills. You will eat, you will be satisfied, and you will bless the Lord your God in the wonderful land that he gives you. There's, I'm going to talk about a few of those verses as we go through the lesson, but the author starts by talking about a time of trial that he had in his life, and and um, I'm not going to go through that because I know we are all in a time of trial right now. Uh, some of us a whole lot more than others, for sure. I have a cousin who lives in New York City, and, and um, she and I had been communicating a lot, and... Um, she lives near Central Park, and it's been a very tough time for her and for everybody there. So we all have trials, and, and mine has certainly been an easy one right now. But the author talks about trial, and he says that one of the things that he found out is that he would just talk to himself. He calls it self-talk. If he would just talk to himself, he could encourage his wounded soul. Bob, I said to myself, this is not your first setback. God has always been with you, and I don't think God's going to abandon you now. Now, those words right there, I think, are enough for the lesson. But the Bible passage for this lesson, as the author says, is a call from the Lord to us to remember who we are as God's people so that we can receive God's wonderful promises. Then the author, he has a, a chapter, the next chapter is called Keep Your Eyes Open. And he says that's what he told his son when he, he went off to college. To he, he wanted his son to go to a small little college, but instead the, the son chooses to go to the big university where the father knows there's lots of stuff going on out there. But the father says to the son, keep your eyes open. And that was, he said, to make his son to be aware of what's around him, the surroundings around him, to think before he did something, to have, have wisdom as he looked around. Now, God gave parental words to the Israelites. That's how the author says it. You must carefully perform all the commandments so you can live and multiply and enter and take possession of this land and like we know this was the journey that they were making to the promised land and it was going to be a new day for the God's people and God had promised the Israelites this land and that they would get there now they complained they mumbled they um Gave up on God a few times, but God never gave up on them. That was our passage last week, too, or a point of what the lesson was last week, is God never gave up. And God also told the Israelites, don't forget your past, Israel. That might be a word for us right now, is don't forget our past. We didn't just wake up one day and things are like they are. Many times there's a past that comes and in a sense we have to face the consequences of our past. And however you feel about it, don't forget your past. He said hard and difficult times have a way of showing what people can believe and what people do believe. Now, one of the things I've been trying to do is uh, do while I was studying this lesson was think of the words that kind of describe how I've been feeling this past week as we've watched all these horrific things occur. Some a few miles up the road from us, a lot of them all over the United States. And um, 
once you get to be 71, like I am, um, I can remember other times of riot and uh, other times of upheaval, but for some reason, this just seems, I guess it's because it's right now. It just seems so so harsh and so hard to watch and, and to be something you wish you could easily fix with just a few words, and it's obviously, that's not happening. Anyway, these were the words I thought about. I thought sadness, disbelief, anger, and then every now and then there would be hopefulness, setback, and then the last thing I wrote down was prayer. How many prayers have you said this week? How many times have you wished that just saying think or don't do that or, or open your eyes there's so many things I wish I could tell these children in my motherly way. Matter of fact, my uh, nieces and nephews wait, make fun of me because I'm kind of a, a lecturer and sometimes we'll be talking about something and I'll go, now don't, don't say that or don't do that. And they just make fun of me for pointing my finger. But I wish I could just go out there and point my finger and say, wait a minute, don't do that. Think. I don't know that it would help. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Israel's wilderness experience would show their true commitment and dependence on God. And then I wrote this down. Do you have a true commitment to God? Sometimes I have in my life, and sometimes I think that's been the last thing I have thought I had a commitment to. Do you have a true commitment to God? God next wanted the people to know his eternal and enduring love. This new land was what God swore to them that they would have. They would be blessed. The wilderness became the testing ground to measure these people's faith. Israelites remain the apple of God's eyes and the wilderness became their testing ground and he's I think I already re said this line but it's always worth repeating even though the people had moments of complaining and frustration the Lord never withdrew from them he was always there during those 40 years of wandering and then how did they survive? And the author uh, makes reference to, this, to the sentence, uh, to the verse where uh, it says that their clothes didn't tatter and their feet didn't swell. Now that is quite a feat, F-E-A-T, if you think about it, from going through the desert. My feet swell. I try to walk at least a mile a day, and uh, I did it today. And when I come in, my knee hurts, my feet have swollen some. Forty years in the desert, and God looked after them. He didn't give them everything they wanted. He gave them everything they needed. The fact that God knows and is concerned about things as simple as the number of hairs on our head. This is what the author wrote causes me to love God even more. So how do you personally see God acting in your life? What is God doing in your life that makes you think he really does love you? And then the author goes on and, and he says they went into a wonderful land. And, of course, he had wanted them to keep his commandments as they went through the desert. And we know all the different things they did and, and how so often they didn't. So God wanted the best for Israel, the best in terms of blessings that would only come by obedience to the divine will. Later in the wilderness story, the Lord told the people, watch yourself. Don't forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. Those were God's words. Watch yourself. God's insistent command comes from his persistent and abiding love. 
Now, I like this part of the story when the author's talking about him. What did that promised land look like? And he describes all the things they had he, after he told them that they would take possession of it. There would be wheat and barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. No wonder this was called the promised land, and the Lord called it wonderful. But then he went on and he told them, and not only was all of that for them, he said there would be opportunity to create prosperity and wealth because they would be able to do that. He gave them a land where they could mine the iron and the copper. And we know the value of those things. So God just didn't give them food. He gave them opportunity and he gave them a chance for wealth and prosperity. So God's holy promise was that they would be fully satisfied. Hence, this is the author's words, hence the assumption is that out of gratitude and love, these Israelites would bless the Lord their God in their wonderful land. God had given them this wonderful land. Unfortunately, as history reveals, assuming is not always the best thing to do. In other words, we shouldn't just assume that everything's going to be wonderful because that's not always the best thing to do. My hope and prayer, this is the author's paragraph, my hope and prayer is that we can see this wilderness story as more than just another episode in Israel's history. This is our story. It's a picture wrapped in the artifacts of ancient Israel that symbolizes our modern day journey through life. Our final destination is good and available to all who stay on the journey, tired feet and all. And then the author says, I encourage you to put feet to the journey. Keep going. Pete, put feet to your journey. And his last sentence, may we as disciples of Christ Fix our eyes on Jesus and run the race that is laid out in front of us since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. So are, are God's promises to you wonderful? Do you share what you see as God's promises? Well, I don't know what this week is going to bring. I hope it's been, it will get better every day. I pray for everybody who is angry and lost and hurt. And, and I hope that they can find their way through this. And I hope I find my way through it. So I, I pray for all of us and look for the day that we can all be together again in person. So let's end in this prayer. Lord, may we always remember that we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. Help us to humbly embrace the wonderful plan you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.